The Medium is a survival horror game from Bloober Team, which are the developers responsible for the upcoming highly anticipated Silent Hill 2 remake. And let's just say fans are skeptical, and for good reason. Bloober Team's history with creating survival horror games is somewhat questionable, to put it mildly, when it comes to the quality of these games. Why do you run like you shit your pants? <laughs> Oh no, that's a good question. Now, having played Silent Hill 2 for the first time not that long ago, this understandably made me very excited at the idea of a Silent Hill 2 remake. Because, I'll be honest, this is one of the best video games I've ever played. And this is a game that could definitely benefit from a remake. But I also want to get to know the development team behind the upcoming remake a little better. And what better way to do that than playing through Bloober Team's most recent release, The Medium. This game only came out a few years ago, so it's still pretty fresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and gather all of this game's trophies, while at the same time getting a better idea at what we could come to expect with the Silent Hill 2 remake. So let's jump right in then, shall we? I'm playing this game blind. If I have to do a second playthrough, whatever, fuck it. Hopefully, I like the game enough to wanna do a second playthrough. The only shitty thing will be if I get through this whole game and say, man, that wasn't great, and then I'll be reluctant to do a second playthrough, which will piss me off. But hopefully, that doesn't happen. All right, here we go. Now, because I am the master of horror gaming, I'm going to find every collectible in this game without a guide. I hope. Wait, we got fixed camera angles? That's kind of dope. Oh my god, I picked up the cat food, chat. Here you go, you ungrateful little bastard. Here you go. What's your face? Glad to see you're still kicking around. Famished feline, you fed the cat in Jack's apartment. 1984. A book about 1984. Is this normal for you guys, chat? How many people in chat have a laundry machine in their bathroom? I, I've literally never seen that. I always find it interesting seeing things like that in in-game houses Jack's room it's like he never damn it it's like he never I used to think I'd never fit in Jack, Jack. he didn't mind my weirdness press and hold to activate insight oh my gosh oh my god a, like semi-functioning mirror Still looks like shit, I've seen but. A lot of these. Dear Mr. Orkin, we request you attend the next parent teacher meeting as we would like to discuss the situation of your brain damaged child. She seems to be having a lot of problems in school, and, uh, well, we think that's quite frankly your fault. Maybe you should come over here, and we should educate you on how to properly raise I your asked. child. Oh, alright. Oh. You know what I didn't do, though? I didn't use insight in every room. Probably a waste to do that. I'm assuming I got everything, but I should make it a habit of using insight whenever I can. Nothing of significance. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Nobody could say I wasn't thorough. Didn't know you played these kinds of games as well. Bro, there's very little I don't play. Yeah. I'd say sports games and racing games are probably the only things you'll never see on my channel. But even then, I could be convinced to play a uh, sports game if it was good enough. Racing games, probably never, though. I don't think I would ever feature a racing game. I mean, even then, may maybe CTR one day. Who fucking knows? Inspect 25 objects in a single playthrough. Wow. That was easy. That's Horror Gaming 101. Click on everything. Didn't even need to think to get that one. Jack's in the prep room. Is he? Then I'll scope there last. Just for you youngins out there, chat, another thing about Video Gaming 101. If there's a way to go, or that you're supposed to go, you always go there last. Do everything you possibly can do first. Huh? But why? I got your special clip. No. Where's your tie? Does that mean I gotta find his fucking tie? Why isn't it already? Well, 
Well, what the fuck does that mean? I better not have to walk or march my ass all the fucking way back upstairs. I will be pissed. Oh, here it is. I mean... We've officially entered horror game territory. Now some really strange shit is going to start happening. Just sprucing up the guy for the games. Oh, wow. Hi. Okay. Here we go. Down to clown circus in town. Whoa, the last goodbye. Goodbye. I love you, Daddy. I guess not. Whoa, from Niwa with love. Find a postcard from the groundskeeper. Easy. Niwa says hello. You would love it here, my dear. Amazing day room for, uh, for kids and free art lessons. Lots of families, and the hotel is huge. I never seen anything like it. W wish you could be here with me. Miss you. Fuck you. Oh my god, there is a way to walk faster. Holy shit. The game never told me that, by the way. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there hasn't been a single tooltip telling me I could do that. The split would come and go. Wait. Focus on the material world? Focus on the spirit world. That's a very interesting gameplay mechanic where, like, you'll probably be able to see shit in one side but not the other, which means you gotta pay extra attention. Press and hold R2 to charge a spirit blast. Oh, so that worked. Good for you, Marion. Whoa! Huh? Welcome to Neva. I don't know why it's pronounced that way, but apparently it is. Whoa, I'm a dual detective. Inspect 50 objects in a single playthrough. Whoa, find an echo. Whoa, find an echo of a mysterious caller. Any other trophies you want to award me with? God damn. Wait. There's dialogue, but I can't hear anything. What's happening? Hell yeah. Hey, old timer. Now, old timer. What's a fine machine like you doing in a place like this? Oh, you got jokes now. Doubling as a spare bedroom, apparently. Oh, the main character's got jokes, chat. My love, summer in full swing. The resort is stuffed to the gills. And you know what that means? More work for yours truly. But it's good work. Honest work. Mr. Reckowitz said that he'd like to keep me on. Can you believe it? I won't fuck this up. Not this time. Fuck you. Hope you don't mind if I, uh, pop your trunk. Whoa! Is that a euphemism? Not what you got either. for me, baby? Although, this could come in handy. Fuck this mechanic. This insight mechanic is going to drive me nuts because... I feel like I always have to have it activated, otherwise I'll miss something. But I, I bet it's not even that strict. I mean, okay, I can't help but, like... What if... After you move the, the trash can, suddenly there's something in here. See, it's, it's that kind of thinking that'll make my playthrough take three times as long. Because my fucking gamer lizard brain, like, I can't help it. I've played too many games where things are sneaky like that. I hear an echo. Up. Oh. Up. Oh. Screams of terror. People running in panic. Why do I feel like this is supposed to have audio, but it doesn't? Wow, if this isn't a scene straight out of Silent Hill, I don't know what is. Like, literally. Hello? The imagery Thomas? there was straight out of Silent Hill 2 in the apartments. I got another postcard. My dearest, I know I promised to visit, but guess what? I got promoted. Yes, really. Meet the new chief of staff. I really think this might be it for me. Baby, a fresh start. 
A place to call home. For us, I mean. You, me, the kids. I know it sounds crazy, but just think about it. Yours forever. Fuck you. Vote for Pedro! Wait, is that a fucking Napoleon Dynamite reference in this book? What the hell? Press and hold circle for an out-of-body experience. Let go. Wait, I can just be in the spirit world controlling this yeah. half? Gotta move fast. I do? I'm on a timer? Running simulator! What's it for? You have run two kilometers. No! Hold out just a little longer. No. What? I'm dead? No way! Oh, what am I doing? Wait, shit. Uh -huh. Whew. That was close. Okay, so so far, the only two things I like about this game, well, actually three things. Fixed camera angles I really enjoy. The voice acting's pretty pretty decent, at least with the main character anyway. And the gameplay mechanics are somewhat <laughs> interesting as well. I have to literally keep telling myself to look at the other version. Because I'll be looking around in one version and be like, okay, I don't see anything. Oh wait, what if there was something in the other version? Can this one have audio, goddammit? Nope, none of them do. Reconstruct a memory! That also isn't voiced! God damn it! Guiding Light, find a page from a mentor's diary. So from what I'm seeing, the sound is supposed to play through the controller. Maybe because you have headphones on, it's messing with it. Could be something to do with your streaming and playing. Like, why is there no option to turn it on or off? Like, every game I've ever played that had speaker audio, there was always a setting to mess with it. Not having audio will lessen the experience, which will suck. Bro, even if the- here's the thing. Even if the audio was coming through the speaker, like, I would hate that. I turn that function off in every game that it's in because I can't stand it. I hate it. I don't even know what Sony was thinking with the- speaker audio functionality it's like they they think it's like some kind of like immersion when really it just takes you if anything it does the opposite it takes you out of the experience you're like listening to the game and all of a sudden your controller's talking to you it's like why is my controller in real life talking to me but every game i've ever played that had it the speaker audio functionality you could always just turn it off and then the audio would play normally in game but in this game, it seems like you either have the speaker audio or no audio, which is weird. I can't possibly be this stuck right now, right? See, I don't like how stuck I am right now because this is a very small environment to explore, which means whatever I need to get unstuck is basically staring me in the face, but I'm not seeing it can't be an out-of-body experience. Oh, it is an out-of-body experience. What am I even looking at? Who knows? <laughs> Holy fuck! Woo! That got me. That got me. Pretty good. That really did get me. The Edge of Sanity, acquire the razor. Damn, that got me good, dude. I haven't had a jump scare get me like that in like a long time, dude. That, I'm kind of impressed. It's weird that there's no audio. Maybe that's another speaker audio only thing. That was disturbingly satisfying. I do kind of like the main character. I'm not gonna lie. I'm almost having some Jesse Faden flashbacks with like going into the game not expecting anything from the main character and then being pleasantly surprised by how much I like them. Is it controller speaker? This shit? 
Man, but that doesn't solve my problem. Because now I have to hear the shitty audio through the controller. I So it's either that or nothing. I wish I could just hear it in-game! Why do I have to hear it through my controller? Fuck that, man! Insightful. Use insight for at least 15 minutes. Oh, there it is. Boom. It's like he's right there with you. <laughs> so immersive. Wow, poggers. Oh. Hey, Janet. Are you? No. Oh. Oh. You burn through the moths using the spirit shield. You progress the story. Good job, numb nuts. How's the game so far? Never played it. It's interesting. I will say, ever since that jump scare that got me in that other apartment, that jump scare simply getting me the way it did. Like, if if you look at my interest as like a meter that's been depleting since I started the game, when I got jump scared, the interest like shot back up. Let's put it that way. Jump scares are kind of boring. They do nothing for me anymore. I'm more about setting up the mood with build up till something disturbing ha happens like Silent Hill 2. No, I was only impressed by that jump scare because it was a good one. I didn't see it coming at all. It genuinely got me and like it didn't feel cheap. It felt like there was build up to it. That's why I was so impressed. That was a genuinely good jump scare. I'm getting I'm getting I'm starting to get a little pissed off cuz like the answer has to be staring me right in the face and it has to be it's it, guaranteed whatever the answer here is it's super simple it's staring me in the face and my stupid advanced gamer mind my quantum giga brain is too superior in intelligence for me to spot it I don't have those shitty casual gamer eyes to spot the solution with Everything the casual gamer eyes can conceive, my eyes have just, like, evolved way beyond that. To the point where, like, I can't see the solution. It's too far below me. I don't see any other pathways. Wait. How much longer can I hold this barrier? Wait, what? Don't tell me I can carry this to the other section. How has it not run out yet? No way this was the answer. I thought the barrier gives out. I thought it has like a duration. You could just hold it the whole fucking way? I'm so trash. Wait a minute. Oh no. Oh, you can quick run with this shit on? Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I didn't realize you could do that. Wait, chat, I'm gonna try it again. If the bubble does have a duration, I just lost less of it because I got through the bugs quicker. Which means my shield will last longer on the next set of bugs. Here we go. Chat, I made it. What do we got? Grand opening, I assume. <clears throat> I inspected a hundred objects in a single playthrough, chat. Gold trophy. Right here. <clears throat> it's a big boy trophy. I could instantly tell there was more to that clock than met the eye. Instantly. Uh. Damn, Mary Ann's got those gamer instincts. I respect it. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying, Marianne. Burn marks? Broken glass and... Is that salt? No, that's cocaine. Someone jotted this down recently. Find a note from a troubled man. Okay. 
So if I go back, there's a passage, but what if I keep going? A spirit well. I could absorb some of that energy. Uh -huh. As I moved. So happy to see you checking this game out. It got a lot of hate, and I really enjoyed my time with it. I might be uniquely situated to appreciate this game more than your average gamer. Because I did grow up playing games like this. You know, horror games, puzzles, the like. Are you alright? Don't. Don't. Run oh. me! Don't go! Oh god. Let me try you on. Oh god, no! Oh my god! Wait, what did it ask me to do? No! Please, no! <laughs> Man, I got bamboozled. That bitch just appeared right in front of me. Said, nope. What? Wait, I thought I had no choice but to fucking turn around. Where else was I supposed to go? Oh, God damn it. All right, third time's the charm, except I still have no idea where I'm actually supposed to go, so it's probably not the charm, but hey, I could be optimistic. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck! Okay, well, we got some info there. I think I did have to run slightly through the bugs. It looks like you're not supposed to go that way because there's an army of bugs there. But I think you are actually supposed to go that way. It's just not obvious for some reason. Yeah, bizarre. Like, it doesn't look at all like you're supposed to run this way and then turns out that's the way you gotta go. Here's a question for the curious mind. What happens if I go back out there? You fucking die. That's what happens. I have none. I have none. A good gamer is a curious gamer, chat. Usually, curiosity is re rewarded. Usually. Uh, I can't help but feel like I missed something back here. How close is he? <gasps> oh! oh, I could get out? Oh, cool. Oh, I didn't know that was a mechanic. If you have power, you could just get out of the grab. That's pretty dope. Okay, maybe I didn't miss anything. I just wanted to make sure, though. You saw, you ran, you lived. You survived a monstrous encounter. Oh, by the way, chat, the real dick thing about this game is that if you do miss a collectible, there's no chapter select. And collectibles are not cumulative. Meaning, if you miss one, you have to pick them all up again. You can't just start a new playthrough and get the one you missed. Bit of a dick move, game. Bit of a dick move. My dearest, I wish this was it. The moment I pluck up the courage and actually said this one. Seems so easy. Just throw it in the mailbox. Then why can't I? Someday, I promise. I love you with all my heart. Fuck you. I touched the mirror and crossed over to the other side. Through the looking glass. Stay with me. Stay. Find Richard. Return his fucking face to him. So the kid I want sat across from Boris. Boris is number nine. Number nine is over here. This one, isn't it? Yeah. 
which means he sat over there. But again, I don't like what exactly is the puzzle here? Like, I'm not understanding. How do I solve it? She said the problem is she doesn't know the kids' names, but she ha she also hasn't given me audio indication that she now knows who they are, which implies that she hasn't figured it out yet. I don't know that going back into the mirror would even, if I'd even be able to do anything. I'm assuming she needs to be like, okay, I figured it out before I can go back. So while inciting every chair, nothing happens. So yeah, like if, again, if there's a puzzle to be solved here, no clue what it is. Interesting, it only lets me interact with this body. Time for you to get some rest. You've earned it, Nicholas. So what? Like that whole room where you could see where the kids sit is for nothing but lore? Like it really seemed like there was a puzzle in there. When in reality, it had nothing to do with anything. Let me in there. Let me fucking in there. Yeah. I'm in there. I'm doing the thing. Just like daddy taught me. Oh yeah. Look at me. Yeet. Oh, we checkpointed. That can't be good. I sense more sneaking around. If there's ever collectibles in those sections where you need to avoid she the demon, that's really annoying. Yes. Fucking finally. Fucking finally. It's time to get back to the day room. I acquired the bolt cutters. Why do they make you? Oh. Escape the creature without alerting it. Oh. Damn. Damn. See. I'm better at this game than I thought, bro. Kinda sounds like a spy name. Cutters. Bolt cutters. <laughs> Dude, the main character is so goofy at or times. A movie star. Like in a movie you don't use your real name for. So I have to go to the day room, but there was a chain I could open back here where the flashlight was. I wonder if this is an optional route or if you have to go this way. Yeah, they're not stopping me from doing it. Oh, I wonder if this is an optional collectible. Well, fuck, I guess that was an optional collectible. It's a good thing I actually remembered to come back and get it. My good memory was rewarded. I always found this game kind of lackluster. See, for me, a lot of the things this game focuses on are things that I can appreciate. Like, for example, I love puzzles. And this game has quite a few. So that's not bothering me at all. But yeah, like again, if you if you like your horror games to be more like combat focused and you like being able to fight your would-be killer, yeah, I could see why someone really wouldn't like this game, because that is not at all the focus. This game is more focused on like telling you a story. And if you don't care about the lore, like, yeah, you're not going to have a good time. Like, this game is definitely a uh, to-each-their-own type scenario. Now, there is one truth about this game that is actually just suddenly dawning on me. Which is, I'm not sure that I'm going to like a second playthrough of this game at all. Like, if I do end up missing a collectible... I'm probably going to be more annoyed than anything trying to get it back. I could tell the second you started it, but on the plus side, at least not looking at a guide every five seconds helps you enjoy a game way more. Yeah, but arguably, I should pull up a guide like right now, assuming I haven't missed anything. That should be all the pieces of the score now. All I could say is it would be really cool to finish this game and find every collectible without a guide. Like, if I could pull that off, I think that would potentially be the first time ever that I had ever done that in a game. I almost want to continue just for the sake of, like, potentially achieving that. And, of course, I must have cursed myself. 
because almost immediately after debating about whether or not I should pull up a guide to help me with the collectibles, which I had done successfully right up until this point, I might add, I hadn't missed anything yet. Then suddenly, my subconscious became so goddamn sidetracked that I quite literally walked right up to this collectible, and I got so close to it that it even prompted me to pick it up. But my brain somehow wasn't even registering this, and unbelievably, I walked right past it. Watching the footage back of me doing this, I was just baffled. I had a very similar moment to this back when I was going for Shadow Warriors Platinum, and if you've seen that video, then you know exactly which moment I'm talking about. But I honestly don't even understand how I'm even capable of this happening. Like, what's the opposite of human evolution? Like, because that's what's going on up here. Devolving, that's the word. I'm devolving, guys. And so, since I never noticed that I had actually missed this collectible, and amazingly, neither did anyone in chat, I just kept playing through the game like I still believed that I hadn't missed anything. But I did! It's amazing you guys can even still look up to me after you guys physically see me do things like this. I don't, I, I don't get it. I wanted to show me something. <gasps> <gasps> Trophies. Unforgiven. You sent the child eater away. Coming in there, Frank. <sighs> What did he shit the bed, literally? Oh, of course. Stay the fuck away from me! Oh, let me try you on. Why do I get the feeling I might have just missed a collectible? What if there was something outside the tent? I clicked on the tent, which immediately like forwarded the progression. But there might have been something around the tent. I'm sorry, what? I was way ahead of him at, before he broke through the wall. And then I just got caught. What the fuck just happened? What the fuck am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm an idiot. Bro, he's like blind, I swear. Shut your fucking mouth! Yes! Burn, you twisted fucking bitch! Not a fan of the side-by-side -side comparison of the dead world and the living world. Like, I think that's very unique. I've never seen a gameplay element quite like it. I like it for its creativity. Like, I appreciate it because it's something I've never seen in a game before. And I like trying to break the mold. Like, when a game takes a risk like that to do something new and creative. To be- for the sake of being different. Spirit walking! Spent ten minutes outside your body. I'm trolling. And also, that was the final of one collectible type. Pretty cool. With any luck, this will be the last echo right here. Please be the last one. Nice, I figured. I will say, I am noticing a very glaring issue with Bloober Team games. And I'm pretty sure every game they make suffers from the same issues, like, time and time again. Yeah, so Bloober games drive a very heavy importance on the narrative, which is great. Like, I like how much they value their plot. They're very focused on the storytelling. The problem is, they're more focused on the storytelling than anything else. Bloober games are all much less gameplay, way more storytelling. I don't know if you noticed, but the vast majority of this game has just been walking around, clicking on shit. Notice how 
despite this being a survival horror game, we've had one jump scare at the very beginning of the game, no others, and every enemy interaction ha has been... There's only been like three? Like enemy interactions with the demon? Or, or maybe like four? And it's very easy to hide from him and avoid him, like almost to the point where it's effortless. But yeah, it's like Bloober games, the way I would describe it, is they give you the illusion of gameplay without it truly really being there. It's more like you're watching, you're walking, talking, and watching events unfold, but you're never really, it never really feels like you're playing a video game. There's so little gameplay elements in a Bloober game and you could tell that where their priorities are. The problem is there's not a nice blend of it. What now? I said they focus too, way too much on story, which is true, but that's not a problem. Story is a great thing in video games. And I will say that they do it well. The story they're trying to tell here. Yeah, I'm immersed. I'm captivated. I'm interested in the story. It's not like they're doing the one thing they're doing badly, which is good. But not good. Not good. It's like they're ignoring so many other important elements of about video games. And the thing is, Silent Hill 2 with the remake, obviously the story's very important and Bloober's good at that. Silent Hill 2's story is like one of the best most complex stories like ever told in a video game. So yes, Bloober being behind the storytelling aspect, I have every confidence that they can pull that off. It's the gameplay elements that worry me, especially because Silent Hill 2 is arguably more combat focused than any game Bloober has ever put out. Which begs the question, is Bloober capable of creating good combat that like keeps the player invested and hooked? Is Bloober capable of that? This will be their ultimate test, I would say. Really only one scare? Yeah, there's only been one jump scare in this game so far, and it got me. It got me good. It was a great jump scare. I hadn't been gotten like that in a horror game in a long time. Like, probably the last game that genuinely frightened me with a jump scare was, ironically, Alien Isolation. But yeah, there was only one. <laughs> it's like, again, even this game's supposed to be a horror game, and you only had hey, one jump scare? Canyon. Not saying that a horror game needs jump scares to be a horror game, but they only had one. And it was a great one. It was effective, but why was there only one? Even this, like look, I'm about to kill this thing or like subdue it, and it's like stay the fuck down. That was the illusion of gameplay. The stupid thing was all scripted movements. I didn't have to time that just now. There was no skill involved. There was the illusion of gameplay that I just killed an enemy, when in reality it was more like a scripted event. A lot of things you do in a Bloober game, gameplay-wise, feel meaningless. It just feels like another stepping stone to get to the next part of the story, because that's all they care about, is the story. Which is another reason why I said earlier I feel like this game is a one and done. It's not a game you want to play twice, and I'm I'm only feeling more like that's the case than ever. Unrepentant. Thomas. Okay, Marianne. Oh. Focus. More story trophies. Yippee! Ideally, I finish my first playthrough and get every trophy, but I don't know if I've missed any collectibles. I want to say I haven't. Ah, shit. Oh! What the fuck? Oh, shit! Oh! Jesus! I almost fucking died! So apparently I only have half of Thomas's notes. Again, that is very concerning. I find it hard to believe that I would find the ten more before the game ends. I mean, maybe, it's possible, but... Yeah, that's definitely concerning. I already feel like I'm at the, at the end of the game. Oh, wait, what was the date? I think it was like 2702. 2702. Fuck. Chat, we might have an honest to god puzzle on our hands. It's really odd that when I opened this, this was the only thing in it. Like, what's up with that? 
10 years time flies happy anniversary maybe that's the code oh this has to have the clue the date was 1976 so maybe it's 1986 if it's a 10 year anniversary 76 nope all right so let's try 1986 that would be 10 years after the date fuck oh i'm a fucking idiot I'm a fucking idiot. I'm so stupid. It's 1966, you fucking dumb fuck. It's a 10-year anniversary gift, not when the watch was fucking made. It's 10 years after. It's 1966. I'm so confident in this. I know I'm not wrong. Fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Holy fuck. I'm an idiot. Hey, it happens. Sometimes we have idiot moments. No fucking ones in me. I thought he was dead. I thought I killed his ass. He's still alive. Of course he's still alive, that stupid bitch. You know, speaking of Tormented Souls, though, I am noticing a lot of um, similarities. For example, the main character is related to the little girl you meet, and you return to, like, somewhere you've forgotten about because of trauma. Like, Tormented Souls literally has the same plot. Exactly the same. Tormented Souls plot has nothing on this, um, I do agree that this game's story is a lot more fleshed out and, like, has more depth. And, I mean, it better, because, like, that's the only thing Bloober Team excels at, you know? Even the final area of the game is so similar to the Tormented Souls final area. An underground, like, bomb shelter with flooded levels? Like, literally. That's kind of crazy, dude. Actually, come to think of it, this entire time I've been walking around this place, I've only been staring at the real-world version. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I might have literally walked past the answer to this puzzle in the spirit world version, but I haven't been looking at that side of the screen, so... If I did pass that answer, I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the answer is there, because in the spirit world, there's no flood. Which means it has to be an out of body. But yeah, no, we definitely gotta out of body this shit. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go find that energy, shall we? Oh, found it. Yeah, that's literally what I was talking about. If you're not paying attention to both screens, you could just very easily miss something. I kind of love that about this game, honestly. It's so creative and thoughtful. I have figured it out. What the fuck? Chat, I was watching the real world. I wasn't watching the fake world. God damn it. Well, that's it. You gotta watch Second both time. cameras. Yeah, I'm very confused, chat. I'm not... I'm not fucking understanding. Wait, what? So that... Yes. Oh! The central chamber's open. Let them feel our pain. Final enemy confrontation here. Uh. Okay. Nine. Oh well, now he's moving. I'm out. Alright, Matt, this part is weird. I look forward to figuring it out. Our pain. So, he didn't move last time. If I just chill here, he doesn't move. It's when I go into the out of body that he starts reacting to me. Nine. N oh, maybe that's like. Oh. Oh, no, he's moving. It all ends in me. No, it's not gonna end in me. Wait. Get back here. Um. 
Where am I going? What the fuck? Did I just completely blind and unknowingly do exactly what needed to be done? Holy shit, you figured it out way faster than me. It took me like 15 minutes. Bro, I mean, I literally, quite literally winged that. I swear to God, chat, if I missed any collectibles in this goddamn game, I swear to God, chat. There's no fucking way. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Is this not the greatest trophy of them all? And so, once I had finally finished my first playthrough, I came to the brutal realization that I had failed in my attempt to get every collectible in this game without a guide. However, I just want to say I came really damn close. In total, I probably missed three or four collectibles tops. I almost got them all. So honestly, I'm proud of me. Oh, and by the way, you may have noticed that I skipped the entire ending sequence completely. And that's because the ending in this game kind of gets nutty. And watching the ending to this game in real time genuinely feels like a huge payoff for actually playing the game. So I really don't want to spoil it for you guys. But besides that, unfortunately, I was stuck having to play another full complete playthrough of this game in order to get the collectibles that I had missed. Although, admittedly, this could have been a lot worse. Luckily, when you know all of the puzzle solutions and just how to quickly blast through the game, this game can be completed in a, just a few hours. So it's really not too bad. And I wasn't completely miserable having to go through it a second time, thankfully. I'll eat you up. It is insane how difficult it is to fuck that up. Like, there are so many instances where it feels like he should 100% have you in his sight line, but he, he doesn't react to you. Like, he was basically standing right behind me at times. It's crazy. Interact with the seating chart one more time. It's hilarious that I did this on my blind run completely without knowing that it was required. That's it. Nicholas. I literally did all this on my first playthrough and I was like, well, what the hell was the point of that by the end of it? It turns out it was all mandatory. Wait, it says I'm about to encounter Ma again in the guide. I don't remember encountering Ma here. I don't remember doing this! Wait, I missed a Maw encounter on my first playthrough? No fucking way, wait a minute. I'm gunning it. I can't- wow, so, on your blind run, you didn't actually finish the puzzle, but it let you continue. Wild. I wonder how many people have played a blind run in this game and, and had it go this way. I, I gotta be in, like, the, the like, 5% of people who never triggered that encounter. Like, that is nuts, dude. I bet only, like, professional speedrunners know about that trick. I just literally discovered it by accident. Now here's the weird thing. The last diary page is in this room. Meaning, I should have had this trophy. Oh, did I seriously never come back in this back corner here? I'm actually so fucking dumb. How did I fucking miss that? I'm actually so trash that I never walked over here. Wow, that was definitely the last one I missed on my blind run. Yeah, so there's, we don't have to worry about any collectibles as Thomas. We could just race through this part as fast as possible. So don't interact with the tent. Just next to the fizzled campfire is a bench with another postcard. Yep, this is the one I missed. You son of a bitch, game. 
Bam. All that's left unsaid. Find all of Frank's postcards in a single playthrough. Got it. Oh, I'm trolling. But again, like, look how hard it is to die. Like, he, when I triggered the birds there, he came walking over. Like, why didn't he see me? Like, why? On the other side of the tool shed is a table with a suitcase on it, which has echo number 25. I am... Did I miss this my first playthrough? I don't know that I got that one or not. It, I mean, it feels silly if I did miss it. On the shelf just below the suitcase on the right is a note, something broken. How to the right are we talking here? Oh, here we go. Echo number 28! Ah! Oh, the misery. <laughs> no, 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 no. This doesn't end here. It all ends in me. Cartoon ass villain. He is a little goofy at times, admittedly. I don't think he's quite as intimidating as some other horror game uh, big bads. I still like him, but I, you know what? I feel like my main liking for Maw is simply because Troy Baker's voicing him. If Troy wasn't voicing him, I'd probably like him less. And Thomas notes number 20. It's done, chat. It only took an extra four hours. I don't even know which Thomas letters I missed. Like, from picking the, all those up, it, it felt like I had picked up all of them in the first playthrough, but clearly I didn't. I don't know which one I missed, though. Maybe it was the one? The one that was under the suitcase. Maybe I never panned the camera down to look at that one. I have no idea, but hey, that's Platinum number 176. He's done it. And how many hours does it say I played? 10 hours, but there's no way that's true. Has to be more than that. I streamed longer than that yesterday. And so that was the medium. And honestly, there's not much left for me to say. I've already spoken at length regarding how I feel about this game throughout this video. Long story short, I liked it. And I could honestly say that I have a little bit of cautious optimism when it comes to the Silent Hill 2 remake. So fingers crossed they don't fuck it up. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And I have showcased many different horror games on my channel before. You guys should check out Signalis, one of my less appreciated videos on my channel. But this was a great game. I loved it. Or if you prefer something more recent, I also covered Alan Wake 2, and I showcased the Platinum Trophy for every Remedy game in that video. So you should definitely check those out if you're interested.